Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, we're going to install Ubuntu Server 2204. What I'm going to do is take you through the installation process every step of the way. And by the end of the video, you'll have your very own installation all set and ready to go. Now, before we get into that, I just want to take a moment to mention my new book, Mastering Ubuntu Server 4th Edition. Actually, this entire video was inspired by chapter one of the book, where I walk you through the full installation process for Ubuntu Server 2204. Now, obviously, the book is going to go into even more detail than I'm going to go over in this particular video. But part of the new edition of this book is that there's video equivalents of several of the chapters and there's URLs to the individual videos that are related to the chapter you're reading at the end of each chapter where that is applicable. So that's just yet another bonus that you get from buying this book. There's also complimentary videos. If you haven't already checked out the book yet, you could go to ubuntuserverbook.com. As of the time I'm recording this video, the book is up for pre-order. It's not quite out just yet, but by the time you are seeing this video, it very well might be out because as of the time I'm recording this, it's right around the corner. Ubuntuserverbook.com will link you to all the places from which you can order the book, and I would really appreciate it if you check it out. Anyway, you don't need to buy the book in order to go along with this video. Like I mentioned, we're going to install Ubuntu Server 2204, and that's the mission at hand that we're going to accomplish with this video. So what I'm going to do first is show you guys how to create the bootable media that you could use to boot a physical server from. But later in the video, I'm going to show you the installation process for Ubuntu Server 2204 within Proxmox because I don't really have a physical server handy right now. And once you boot your server, the rest of the process is the same anyway. So you know what? Without any further hesitation, let's just go ahead and dive right in. So the first thing we'll need to do is download Ubuntu Server. And to do so, we'll just go to the official website in our browser. And we can get there by just typing ubuntu.com into the address bar. And that brings us to this particular website right here. Now, of course, the layout of the website might change from time to time. But what we want to do is click where it shows download. Then we'll click on Ubuntu Server right here. Let's go to option number two, because I want to show you how to manually install Ubuntu Server. And then we'll click on the download button right here. And as you can see, it's downloading right now. So I'm just going to wait for this to finish, and then I'll be right back. And as you can see, it's already done. If I go into my downloads directory here, you can see that I have the downloaded file. It's an ISO file, so that's what you should end up with. And the file name might change after point releases are released in the future. I know 2204.1 is due out very soon as of the time I'm recording this video, but the process will not change if the point release changes. So we have what we need, at least in terms of the ISO file. But next, what we'll need is a way to write the ISO file to the flash drive. Now, there's several different methods we could use for that. But one of the methods that I like is the etcher method because that's a tool that works with multiple operating systems. So if your local computer is running Mac OS, Windows, or Linux, it really doesn't matter. You could use that same tool regardless of the platform that you run on. So what we'll do is just go up here and we'll type in etcher.io into our browser. And that takes us to the official site. It should auto detect the operating system that you're using on your local workstation. So you just click on that, and as you can see, it's downloading. This is the Linux version. So as you can see, it's finished downloading. So in my file manager, in the downloads directory here, we now have the Etcher application ready to go. And again, I mentioned that this is going to work for those of you that are running on Mac OS or Windows as well. So you might get a different file name. Anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and extract it. And here it is, and it's an app image. So what I should be able to do is click on this and it's running. It's just that simple. So at this point, I will just minimize this window and that one. We have the etcher window. We're going to click flash from file and then we'll click on the downloads directory or wherever your downloaded ISO file ended up. We'll click on that. We'll open it up. So step one is complete. Next, we need to select the target. 
and this is going to be our flash drive. Now, again, the contents of your flash drive will be completely wiped out, and you'll be dedicating the flash drive for the purposes of installing Ubuntu Server. So just make sure if there's anything on the flash drive that you'd rather keep, that you back that up before you continue. Anyway, what I'll do is insert my flash drive, and then I'll click Select Target, and I've already written the Ubuntu server installation image to this particular flash drive already, so that's why it shows Ubuntu server is already on it. But just confirm that you select the right device. You definitely want to make sure of that. I know this is, in fact, my flash drive. It's 32 gigs or thereabouts. So this is the flash drive right here. So we'll select that. And next we'll click flash. You can see that the flashing process is moving right along. All right, so now it's validating that the image was written to the flash drive successfully. And it's done. So what I'm going to do right now is switch the camera over to another device, and that device will be used as the example device that I'll be installing Ubuntu Server onto. Now here I'm going to show you guys the process of installing Ubuntu Server on Proxmox because I don't have a physical server in front of me. So what you can do is just assume or pretend that I do have a server in front of me and inserted a flash drive into the USB port, pressed the appropriate key to access the boot menu, and then selected the flash drive as the boot option, which is exactly what you'll do on your end when it comes to booting into the actual installer. But for me, what I'm going to do is create a virtual machine here. So I guess if you're also using Proxmox, then this is, well, right up your alley. Anyway, I'll just go ahead and accept the defaults for most of this. I'll just call this Ubuntu Server. Then for the operating system, what I'll do on my end is just choose the appropriate repository that contains my ISO images. I've already downloaded Ubuntu Server to Proxmox, so it should have it here. And if I scroll down, you can see it right here. There's the live server image. And then for this, I will leave all of that at the defaults. Same here. For CPU, I will crank that up to four. Just want to make sure that the installation goes reasonably fast for this particular tutorial. For memory, I think two gigs is fine, but you know what? I'll just bump that up to four gigs. So that should be fine for that. I'll choose my VM network. And again, you shouldn't have to do any of this if you are installing on a physical server, but I want to make sure that I have something to show you. So anyway, I'll click Next. I'll start the virtual machine as soon as it's created. And we can see right here that it's being created right now. And it's actually already starting up. So here we can see the very first screen. I'm just going to press Enter to bypass this right here. Now we're starting up. So this is what you should see on a physical server right here. This is a virtual display on Proxmox, so it's close to the same thing. Anyway, here on the initial screen, we're choosing our language. So basically, you just choose your language, whatever your local language happens to be. For me, it auto-detected English, which is correct. So I'll press Enter. And anytime you see this message right here, it's basically just giving you the opportunity to download the newest version of the installer. So you should always do this. So I'll just use the up arrow here, and then I'll select the option update to the new installer. And there we go. So next, we're going to choose the default layout for our keyboard. You can go up here by pressing the up arrow and select a different layout if it's different for you. But I'll leave mine on English. And I'll select Done. Now here we have an option for installing Ubuntu Server or the minimized version of Ubuntu Server. The minimized version actually has a smaller footprint and fewer packages included by default. I'm not going to recommend that you choose that option this time around, especially if you are following along with the book. Reason being, I don't want to remove any features from Ubuntu Server I want to teach you guys Ubuntu Server as it's intended. So we'll leave it on Ubuntu Server for this particular selection. But in the future, if you want a more minimized version, especially where install size is important, you might want to explore the minimized version and how it differs. Anyway, I'll press Enter. And here it's actually going to get an IP address via DHCP. 
and it's already grabbed one. It ends in 219, as you can see right here. And if you want to create a static IP assignment, you can do that. You can go up here and select your interface, and then you can edit this accordingly. So for example, edit IPv4. You could drop this down to manual if you want to set a static IP. And then you fill out the values right here that corresponds to what the IP assignment should be in your network. I'm going to cancel this though and keep it simple and just keep DCP for now. You can always change this later. And in the book, it actually shows you how to create a manual IP assignment. So I would recommend that you choose the DCP option and then customize later according to your needs. So I'll go down here to done and press enter. If you have a proxy, then you know you have a proxy. And in that case, you should know what to enter right here for the proxy address. But if you don't have a proxy, which is going to be the majority of you, you could just leave this blank. For the mirror address, I recommend just keeping whatever is auto-selected here. So let's press enter. And we're going to default to using the entire disk. And then let's go down to done and press enter. Now it's giving us a summary of all of these selections that we've made so far. And everything looks good to me. So I'll press enter on done. I'll confirm that I want to continue. It's just letting you know that everything on the disk is going to be completely wiped out. Well, this is a brand new virtual machine anyway, so there's nothing here that I care about at all. So I'll choose continue. Next, we could type in our name. So I'll just type in mine right here. For the server name, I'll call mine Ubuntu-server. You should probably come up with a more, well, descriptive name because if you actually get into file sharing, this is the name that will show up with the other nodes in your network. So you might wanna make sure that you choose a name that corresponds to the server's use case, but you could always change it later. So I'll press tab and choose a username. I'll just use J just like that. And then the password, let's set a password. And then again, and then we can arrow down to done and press enter. Now I do recommend this option right here, install OpenSSH server. So you can press space to select that option. If you have an SSH key, you can import it here. I'm going to skip that for now, at least to keep it simple. And let's go down to done and press enter. And here we have a bunch of additional options for things that we can install. These are snap packages, something that I covered later in the book if you are following along with the book. I'm not going to choose any of these. I'll just press tab and go down to done. And now Ubuntu server is installing. I'll let it finish and then I'll be right back. And now the process is complete. We can see the reboot now option has appeared at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is just tab down to reboot now and press enter. That's going to actually reboot the entire server. And if this works, we should have an Ubuntu server installation ready to go. And it's telling me to press enter, which I'll do right now. And now our instance is rebooting. Now, as it's booting up, you might see several messages being interrupted by CloudInit output, which is normal. CloudInit runs during the very first boot, which it's done, and it's actually ready to go. I could press enter right here, and that'll bring up the login prompt. And there it is. So I can log in with the user that I created during the installation process. And now I'm logged in to the server. And there you go. Now you have your very own installation of Ubuntu server all set and ready to go. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you again next time.